welcome to this segment of Loving Life. I'm Charlie Silva, board certified hypnotist and certified professional life coach. I've helped many people take back control of their life and achieve their goals by asking the following question. Loving life, are you loving yours? If so, wonderful. If not, why not? If there's something that's stopping you from loving your life, what is it? And let's find ways to overcome it. If you missed any previous segments of Loving Life, you can watch them online at the MTN18 website, mtn18.com. Now, as viewers of Loving Life know, one of my favorite websites is the Secret Society of Happy People at www.sohp.com. The site was started by Pamela Gail Johnson as a way to celebrate happiness. She always has some fascinating articles about how we can find happiness in our life. I recently read several articles on her website about different ways to achieve happiness. And one of the articles focuses on the question, is it possible to raise your happiness set point? According to this article, as you look at the people in your world, you likely group them into categories like Mary Sunshine or Debbie Downer. They can immediately lift the energy in a room or suck the living daylights out of it. Well, do you ever stop to wonder whether they've always been like this? Maybe they were born this way. Then again, life experiences could have shaped their outlooks. Although we all have qualities of both Mary and Debbie, chances are you naturally lean one way more than the other. However, that's not to say you're forever destined to stay that way. Now we all have our bad moments and even bad days. We wouldn't be human if we didn't. And it's healthy to feel those emotions and move through them. But why do some of us, regardless of our situation, seem mostly happy, while some of us seem mostly unhappy? Well, scientists have found that we each have a happiness set point, the genetic and learned tendency to remain at a certain level of happiness, similar to a thermostat setting on a furnace. As the article notes, two of our greatest barriers to happiness, fear and anxiety, have been hardwired into us to ensure survival as a species. In today's world, however, that old wiring has become somewhat obsolete and more harmful than helpful. The article explains that we have the following three barometers of happiness that we experience each day of our life. See if any of these are familiar to you. The first is feeling happy, but for a bad reason. This is when someone attempts to feel better by indulging in actions that feel good in the moment, but are ultimately detrimental. Things such as drugs, alcohol, compulsive gambling, overeating, spending hours on end on the computer. This kind of happiness is only a temporary way to numb out or escape unhappiness through fleeting experiences of pleasure. The second barometer is feeling happy for a good reason. This includes things such as good relationships with family and friends, fulfilling careers, financial security, nice houses and cars. While these things can definitely have a positive impact on us, they depend on the external conditions of our lives. If these conditions change, our happiness usually changes too. True happiness doesn't come from merely collecting an assortment of happy and fleeting experiences. At your core, you know there's something more. And the third barometer is feeling happy for no reason. People with high happiness set points typically experience this type of barometer. This is true happiness, a state of peace and well-being that isn't dependent on external circumstances. This isn't euphoria that doesn't last. In fact, when we're happy for no reason, we can feel any negative emotions, sadness, fear, anger, or hurt, and still experience that underlying state of peace and well-being. People with high happiness set points don't have special powers. They just have different habits. Now, psychologists say at least 90% of all behavior is habitual. So to become happier, we need to look to our habits. Now, some books and programs tell us we can simply decide to be happy. Just make up our minds to be happy, and we will be. Well, now, while that's a good start, it's too simplistic and may not be realistic. Researchers have found that all of our habitual thoughts and behaviors in the past have created specific neural pathways in the wiring of our brains, like grooves in a record. When we think or behave in a certain way over and over, those neural pathways are strengthened and the grooves become deeper. 
Unhappy people tend to have more negative neural pathways. That's why we typically can't just ignore the realities of our brain's wiring and just decide to be happy. To raise our happiness set point, we need to create new grooves. Scientists used to think that once a person reached adulthood, the brain was fairly well set in stone and there wasn't much we could do to change it. But new research says that when we think, feel, and act in different ways, the brain changes and actually rewires itself. Brain researcher Dr. Richard Davidson says that based on what we know of the plasticity of the brain, we can't think of things like happiness and compassion as skills that are no different from learning to play a musical instrument or tennis. So it is possible to train our brains to be happier. Now the second article asks the question, what separates the world's happiest people from the rest of us? According to the polling agency Harris Interactive, about one-third of the U.S. population describes itself as very happy. These are the people in your office who are upbeat and eager no matter what unexpected challenges come their way, and the ones who seem to get genuinely excited over the smallest opportunities and kindnesses. They're the folks in your social circles who endure hardship with smiles on their faces and who seem hardwired always to look on the bright side. Now, studies show that half of happiness is determined by genetics, and a little under 40% is governed by the impact of external events. You own the 12% of the package that's left, however, and it turns out that the choices you make within that 12% make all the difference between being happy or not. Happier people realize this, and as a result, they make some key choices just about every day. One of the choices is that they choose to exercise. There are many happy people who aren't in great physical shape, so how does this make sense? The explanation is that you need only seven minutes of exercise a day if you're exercising for the sake of happiness. That's enough to make your body release endorphins, the neurotransmitters responsible for that famous runner's high. They might not even call it exercise, but happy people find at least a small period of time each day to devote to moving around. Another choice they make is choosing to spend time outside. Just 20 minutes a day outside is enough to elevate your level of happiness. You can even combine this with choice number one and take your short exercise break outside. A simple walk at lunch or even a little time in the backyard on the patio or at a nearby park makes the difference. They might not even realize its impact on their happiness, but happy people make it a point to get outdoors. They choose to focus to make time for loved ones. Happy people make at least some small amount of social time with loved ones every day. Even just checking in with friends for a few minutes on the phone or a 10-minute conversation or activity together can make a difference. Happy people might not always have as much time as they'd like, but they find a way to interact with friends. They choose to find meaning in their work. Part of happiness comes from using your gifts and talents every day to make some kind of difference. Happy people might not have found their dream job or their true calling, but they find a way to put their daily tasks in perspective and to take pride and joy from what they do. And finally, happy people choose to contribute to their communities. Being part of a community gives you a sense of belonging and helps improve your sense of self-worth, even as you work to define who you truly are. So every day, truly happy people find a way to share something with their broader communities. So how happy are you? If you have some negative habits you'd like to replace with positive ones that will help make you happier, you know hypnosis is a wonderful tool to help you do exactly that. Give me a call and I'll be happy to help. Now be sure to check my website for upcoming Take Back Control of Your Life workshops. The workshops are free of charge. If you have goals you'd like to achieve but have been unable to do so, attending one of my workshops may be all you need to take back control of your life. Well, I'm sure I've given you some things, positive things, to think about. Send any questions or comments you have to me at charlie at mtn18.com and I'll answer them in future segments of Loving Life. I'm Charlie Silva and I'm asking you, Loving Life, are you loving yours? If so, wonderful. If not, why not? If there's something that is stopping you from loving your life, what is it? And let's find ways to overcome it. Always remember that you are awesome. Have a wonderful day filled 
with love and gratitude.